Hello everybody, today we'll be presenting a wealth management case on the couple John and Jane Smith. Um, and you guys will fill the role as John and Jane Smith as the audience, but before we make this transition, I'd first like to introduce myself. My name is Jake Kane. I'm a certified financial planner along with my colleague Ryan Hamlin, who is also CFP certified. We have been in the financial industry for over 50 plus years and currently own our own firm. Um, HC Financial, which was founded in 2015. So John and Jane, welcome back uh, for your second client meeting. We really enjoyed our first getting to know um, each of you. We first wanted to recap uh, kind of what we talked about in our first meeting, uh, which was your current financial situation along with goals that uh, you wanted to reach before you reached retirement, um, along with our recommendations for you to fulfill those goals and additional recommendations for you just to get on your radar before we enter our third meeting. So for your current financial situation, um, I first just wanted to applaud you guys for being debt free. This is something that not a lot of people can say that they are um, a part of this club. And this just offers opportunity and flexibility during retirement and in retirement. Um, so you don't have to worry about paying down debt each month. So as you can see with your careers, we uh, projected you guys to take home about 70,000 per year after taxes, which falls in the 22% um, income tax bracket. And you also mentioned that one of your goals in the first meeting was to retire both of you at 65. Um, and you recently inherited 425 from your mother in laws passing, which we are truly sorry about. Um, but um, as a plus, this will offer additional opportunities, and John, you already have a great chunk of change in your 401k, and we'd like to, uh, to keep feeding that uh, approaching your retirement date and in retirement through your uh, inheritance money. And um, so, yeah, so some of the goals that you talked about in your first meeting was to be involved grandparents, so you wanted to do this through providing an education savings plan for your, grandchild, for your grandchildren and also funding for a vacation home where your grandchildren can come visit you in the summer. This was something that was on your top priority list that we wanted to make sure happened for you, as well as providing wedding assistance for your last child who is uh, nearing his wedding date. He's almost hopefully finding that, uh, that one person for him. Um, and you mentioned that you would pay uh, 10,000 to fund for these expenses. And then along with John, you said that you wanted to be more of an avid golfer when you reach that retirement age at 65. So we have allocated between eight to nine months of golf expenses for you to reach that goal. And with that, I will pass it on to Ryan who will um, discuss recommendations. Thank you, Jake. So now that we've gone through the agenda and we've discussed the goals that you guys told us at the beginning in our first meeting, I'd like to go through this quick breakdown about some ideas that we discussed a little bit last time, but want to get a lot deeper into this time. So first, as you can see, uh, we thought a vacation home would be a great way to diversify some of this $425,000 inheritance. It's a lot of money and you usually don't want that much of it in one investment or one type of investment. So a vacation home would be a great place for your grandkids and also a great investment vehicle. 529 plans, I wanted you to get think about it right now. It's a college savings account for your first grandkid and the ones that follow. We're gonna get into that a little bit later as well. Uh, as far as wedding expenses go, uh, you guys agreed to $10,000, like Jake said, for your first so, or for your last son's wedding, which is very generous, and we'll, sure, we'll be sure to work that in. Uh, the golf that Jake mentioned, and then also the low risk investment portfolio with your remaining uh, funds after we get through the rest of the 425. So let's get into it. So first, uh, you mentioned your first goal is to be an involved grandparent. So the 529 plan is a Michigan uh, government sponsored thing where plan where uh, you can deposit $25,000 as a starting chunk from the original $425,000 um, sum that you received and it will grow tax-free until you are ready to withdraw that money uh, to pay for your grandchild's college. So basically anything, as long as it's used for any school expense, whether it be tuition, uh, dorms, or supplies, it will qualify for this plan and you will not have to pay nearly the amount of taxes that you would have had to pay uh, in a traditional savings account. Uh, additionally, another way to be a great grandparent and great parent to your kids is by using the summer home to entertain them and their friends and their family, uh, extended family, um, through a $30,000 down payment of the inheritance uh, onto a $200,000 to $250,000 home, which is what you told us in the first meeting was your comfortable budget. Uh, additionally, we have budgeted $50,000 from that inheritance uh, to be used just for renovations, uh, any early mortgage expenses, 
and uh, any other needs of the, of the summer home that are unexpected. So there's no reason to feel any anxiety about this big of a purchase. Everything will be covered in this, in this plan. Uh, as far as a lifestyle uh, upgrade goes, you guys mentioned that as you're nearing retirement, you want to start having a little bit more fun. Uh, so we've added a $1,000 monthly increase to your wants budget and a $300 increase to your golf budget. So John, I know specifically you're a big golfer and you were not happy with the current golf budget that you had with your wife. So we found some room from the $425,000 to be able to use this uh, to fund some golf. So this is actually a $13,000, $800 increase um, to just use for wants only, not anything need based, which is kind of nice. Uh, additionally, for retirement savings, so uh, there's a few ways we can go about this. John, uh, we know you've been saving for your, your 401k for a long time and you've been doing a pretty good job with that, but we do think that with this new $425,000 uh, increase in your funds that you can start saving a little bit more aggressively as you near retirement. Uh, so we'd like you to double the, your current $500 contribution and up that to uh, $1,000 a month, which will get you closer to the max without quite getting to the max. So that should help you feel a little more comfortably. Uh, additionally, uh, we'd like you to open a traditional uh, IRA, which basically um, it's front end uh, or it's back end deferred, front end deferred. So basically, what you're going to be doing is your employer will pay you. You'll deposit this money directly into this retirement account. You'll skip taxes on the front end, and you'll be able to move um, right into uh, retirement. So when you want to withdraw the money, uh, you will be paying the tax bracket that you're currently in when you retire and take it out, rather than the tax bracket you're currently in, which is much higher. So we factored in about 10 to 12 percent in savings. Additionally, with all the growth that you're going to be maintaining uh, throughout. Uh, finally, uh, what we're going to do with the inheritance money is start a revocable trust. So a revocable trust is basically something that you can edit throughout your lifetime, whereas something like an irrevocable trust would be a little bit more rigid and something you cannot change. So we figured you'd prefer revocable over irrevocable uh, for a few reasons. So first, uh, the protection from estate taxes. So this is huge. Uh, if you want to transfer all of your assets to, let's say, your house, uh, any cash you have, any investments, to your kids and grandkids, you'd have to go through this estate tax system, which could take quite a large percentage of, uh, of what you wanted to pass down to your kids, of what you worked hard to save, and all the assets you worked very hard to attain. Uh, but this revocable trust will protect you and shield you from these taxes. Additionally, the privacy and simplicity of this fund is awesome. You only have to work with us, your two advisors, that we hope you trust and each other and the trustee to uh, enforce this trust. Uh, so there's no government involvement, like for you, if you were to use a will, uh, it could be taken to court over some um, something that wants to be uh, negotiated or rethought about your will. So that saves that portion. Uh, it also helps with a very concrete as asset distribution plan, um, which will make sure that basically all your assets go to exactly where you want and you don't have to worry about after you die, uh, assets being pulled by people that you didn't really think deserve them. So, oh, and uh, safety. So as a safety net, uh, you, don't, you never know when the time will come when you'll need to use this. So it's better to have it earlier rather than later. Even if your health is fine, like as it is right now, it might not seem like a pressing need, it actually is a lot more important than, than what you thought. So really, the bottom line is, <clears throat> excuse me, the bottom line is we want you to stick to this 50-30-20 rule with your future income. So you still have your salary, you know, you're not ready to retire yet, which we think is great, um, but we do want you to, to, to follow this 50-30-20 plan of 50% um, needs, 30% wants, and 20% savings like you've been doing. And then with the rest of the inheritance, depending on which of these actions you decide to take, uh, it could all be used and distributed properly, or you might decide that you don't want something and it might leave some cash left over. Uh, we will reevaluate and put it into a fund for the time being of 50% stocks, 40% bonds, and 10% cash to serve as some type of emergency fund in case something were to come up. Uh, with that, I'm gonna pass off to Jake uh, to say some final words for you. So thank you guys a million for coming to our second meeting. We really look forward to building our relationship with you as clients. Um, as always, if you have any questions or concerns about our recommendations or more, more goals that you'd like to add before you approach retirement, please let us know. Our numbers and emails are listed below, and thank you guys. Who has a question for Jake and Ryan? Come on, people, help me out here today. Yep. How would you handle if they weren't able to fund the wedding due to like the large expanse of their goals? Like, how would you break that information for them? Uh, so the ten thousand dollars is already factored into their plan. If they decide that they want to do more than that, um, there's probably room in the budget. But we do have all their money allocated somewhere at the moment. So if they were to decide to not go through with 
as expensive a vacation home as they decided. Uh, more money could be freed up through that. The $50,000 we designated as um, like a furnishing expense was a lot higher than we knew they would need, but we really did that so that they wouldn't feel any anxiety uh, about buying such a big house and expanding their assets like that. So uh, we could always take money from that too if they, if they wanted to do more than 10000 for the wedding. Uh, you both mentioned that John wanted to allocate some more funds to playing more golf, but you, you made it like an eight to nine month plan for that. How, how would that look? Because is he only going to play for nine months? Like how does that look? Yeah, so this is something that he touched on in the first meeting. He was only, or we were only going to allocate golf expenses for months April to October or April to November. Um, so this would be during summer months or, or warm weather since, since they live in, uh, in Michigan and can't golf in, in the winter. So we just allocated 200 a week yeah. for those eight months. All right, thank you so much.